Unturned is a free-to-play Steam game that, despite what my channel might lead you to believe, is absolutely baller. And it's one of my favorite games. One of my favorite things about it is the lore, because while on the surface it may seem pretty standard, evil corporation makes bioweapon zombie, zombie escapes, world falls apart, Ewan steps in and attempts to save the world, throw some aliens in there while you're at it, and boom. That's Hollywood. However, this is not the true story of Unturned. The bad guys are not the evil villains we are led to believe, and the benevolent survivors are nothing more than murderers and imperialists. The first of this two-part series will focus on the so-called evil corporation of Scorpion 7. <laughs> Scorpion 7 is a bioweapons manufacturer with explicit links to North American governments. Or maybe North American governments hate it. Not gonna lie here, a lot of the lore is kinda sketchy and doesn't necessarily make all that much sense. Like there are bioweapons manufactured, but the US military and Canadian government don't like them. But they only seem to have facilities in North America. It doesn't really make sense, but I'm gonna roll with it. Most likely, it has seen success selling weapons to both the Canadian and American militaries. Or maybe... Maybe Mexican cartels? I'm not gonna lie, I, 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 I don't know where they sold their weapons. Although both governments seem to have been very suspicious of the Institute's intentions and discoveries. So much so that it had to relocate out of Prince Edward Isle due to the local Canadian government's investigation into the company's activity. Which, granted, does seem to be justified for two main reasons. The first justification is that in their escape, they covered it up by kidnapping and brainwashing a family and relocating them to a farm above the now demolished Scorpion 7 site in PEI. The second is that, well, frankly, Scorpion 7 did a fairly bad job of demolishing their site. Eventually, the front sign to their base resurfaced and it's irradiated. This means that there was radiation experiments being carried out at this site, near residential areas. Furthermore, this would imply that there is eradicated waste beneath the farmland. At this point, many of you may be thinking that all of this info disproves my theory about Scorpion 7. Here, I would like to clarify, Scorpion 7 is a despisable company. It is merely not as malicious as is made out to be. And here we turn to Washington. The Washington State facility was built in February of 2018, and it may seem as if it was built to test a new bioweapon. In fact, that's what many would tell you, that the workers at this site created a new bioweapon which reverted humans into green, animalistic states of mind with only one instinct kill. Then one day, a specimen breached containment and spread its virus to the entirety of Washington and beyond. But this seems wrong. You see, I don't think these zombies were actually created in Washington. In fact, I'm not convinced they were created by Scorpion 7 at all. The first evidence is that if the turned were created in this facility, there would be three months in which they built the lab created the turned, and unearthed aliens and started experimentation on railgun technology. Is this possible? Sure, it totally is. The game isn't exactly renowned for its realism. But, this seems like a lot for presumably only three months. Now the reason I give three months time frame is because we know Flight 106 landed in Russia in May of 2018 and began the infection found on the Russia map. But we don't know where this flight took off from. If it was outside of Washington, it means infection started elsewhere or that the breach and containment happened even earlier, giving Scorpion 7 less than three months to complete everything we see them do in Washington. Once again, possible, but not very probable. Rather, I believe the Scorpion 7 facility was actually built to begin research surrounding the crashed polysulfid ship in Washington. 
it is my belief that the basement was in originally intended to hold the Polyso Federation personnel who may have still been in cryogenic sleep. However, at some point they were either issued an emergency notice that a new bioweapon was being shipped to their location due to the suspicion of the Canadian government, or found these turned and had to quickly store them. Either way, this has a very interesting effect on some of the greater story. It means that the US military team watching the facility was not concerned about any sort of zombie outbreak, but rather concerned about the aliens the Institute discovered. Why would the US military be so concerned about these extraterrestrials, you might be wondering? Well, because this alien spaceship is the sister ship to the one that crashed in New Mexico. Which is a weird old his direction for this game to go in, but honestly, I'm all for it. The government is scared of the aliens. For whatever reason, the US government is very concerned with Scorpion 7 making contact with the Polysols. Which isn't surprising, as if the Polysol Federation ever discovered that their scouting ships were shot down by the US military, they would most likely not be pleased. Here we turn to the second of the maps with the Scorpion 7 presence. Yukon. If there was any Scorpion 7 facility that produced the turned, it would be the Yukon facility. A facility that was working on pharmaceuticals and addictive drugs. In fact, there's even a biodome where we can find zombies all natural. I think Motomoto likes you. In fact, there is even a mecha zombie which can spawn here, implying that a poor soul was turned while trapped inside and spread the outbreak from there. But I actually disagree with this interpretation. Now, I'm actually conflicted whether or not the turn were created here. You see, it seems weird. We actually know one of the scientists here named Dr. Benhan. Dr. Dr. Behan? Dr. Behan? I, I don't really know. This man had such a good heart that when he moved from PEI, he left his dog to the family who takes over the farm. He's a very kind man and brings up objections about the hallucinogenic project, saying that he cannot see a possible consumer application. While many will see this as a sign he was being forced to work on the zombie virus, I don't think this was necessarily tested on humans. We know it had started testing on animals. But if they moved on to human testing, they did it in a very weird way. If we are to believe that the Institute began human testing, they would have had to kidnap several people and move them into a biodome and use their new weapons and when they transformed into zombies, simply left them there. No, what I believe what happened was that they began to test on animals and the animals started to become erratic and aggressive. At some point, one managed to escape and infect people. And I can actually show where exactly these people lived. This abandoned barn. One of the few places where no zombies spawn in normal gameplay. Why would this be? Simple. The owners of this barn were presumably bit and infected by escaped test subjects from the Yukon facility. Scorpion 7 learned of this, quickly took them, and transported them back to their facility, where they locked them in the biodome, stripped them, and began to quickly attempt to find a way to cure or to control them. At some point, a researcher was also infected and left there. While attempting to administer a vaccine, something changed and the researcher mutated into a mega zombie. At this point, Scorpion 7 put the biodome on lockdown, but the government had caught wind. At some point, they performed a raid where they ripped the door from its hinges, exposing the biodome and dooming the Yukon. And that is the true story of the Northwest.